Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweaker Man video. So while I was um, working away in the studio here yesterday, I often watch some YouTube videos and that, and uh, Anna Dialog had just uh, released a new video. And it was about a professor that had been testing, doing tests on cabling. I think that's what it was, and he came up with um, with a conclusion that cables do improve sound quality or can make a difference to sound quality. So, um, I mean, if you don't know Anna Dialog, pop over to his channel and take a look. Um, it's quite interesting. I shall post a link to the uh, video in the description below. And so let's just take a look at uh, Belvoir to start with, because... Um, Obviously, uh, there's a lot of snake oil police out there that think cabling is uh, is uh, snake oil, <laughs> and um, and I always also nickname them the Bell Wire Brigade. So let's just look at some Bell Wire to start with. So this is some Bell Wire there. So this is actually made of something called TPC, tough pitch copper. So when they call it tough pitch copper, it's got uh, it's got some copper in it, but it's made up of all sorts of rubbish, and it's just used for general purpose cabling, which is fine for boiling a kettle and doing other stuff. But when it comes to audio reproduction, it's pretty rubbish, in my opinion. Um, there's a single stranded bell wire there. I don't know whether you can see it very easy. The lighting's not that great in here today. There you go. It's just a single stranded copper bell wire. I've got a whole roll of it there. There we go. And what would be the difference between listening to that bell wire and this standard OCC oxygen free copper wire, which is just PVC insulated again. So I've done listening tests on all of these bits and pieces. Now, obviously, the, the better the, the equipment you have, the more attention to detail you need to pay to cabling. Because if you had a, uh, a little MIDI system from Curry's or something like that, or I was going to say Dixon's or, 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 or Comet or do you remember back in the day there was something called Rumbelows <laughs> well you, if you hooked it up I mean most of these little systems would come with some wire like that which you know if you was to change the wire on those I very much doubt it would do a lot because it would be the dynamics and everything else that that system produces is very poor but we're not talking about systems like that we're talking about being audio files so that's why we we try to push to get the best sound quality so here is one of my speaker cables that i've made in the past so this is not oh no continuous cast copper this is just um this is just uh oxygen free four nines 10% silver cladded copper. Right, so now I'm going to post a picture now of some Ono continuous. Oh, I'm getting all tongue tied. Ono continuous, continuous cast copper in a picture. And it shows you all the different grades of different coppers. So that's going to come up now. And. Um, and then there's some speaker cable now that's going to come up now, which is a woven type. Now, in my opinion, um, when you listen to this type of cabling on, on a very nice system, it doesn't have to be very expensive. It can be, uh, you know, an amplifier costing £200 and same with a CD player. This type of speaker cable sounds very thin. The bass is reduced quite a lot. Um, the sound stage is, is sort of almost non-existent. But I can understand why the snake oil police get wound up. It's because 
the costings of a lot of these cables these exotic cables and that is the whole reason well when i set my audio business up, i used to produce exotic cables as well similar to what i'm doing now but the difference with me now is i'm teaching you how to build this stuff yourself so in effect it is still a lot more expensive than buying this bell wire or even this speaker cable which is relatively cheap it's using pvc insulation in inst insulation i can't get my words out this morning um which has a, a dielectric constant of around about 3.9 where this teflon is about 1.5 which means that the amount of uh, material touching the conductor is a lot less therefore letting the signal flow better and therefore improving sound quality now bare wire would do would be the best but the problem is it'd be arcing out all over the place touching each other and it would oxidize too quick so that's why we have to insulate it with something now we know that cotton and uh, wool have a, a, a very low dielectric constant which is even better but i don't tend to use that for speaker cable just for fire risks and things like that so um and then we get in the realms of of uh, shielding cables now the twisting of wire helps towards uh, rejecting radio frequency information electrostatic uh, electromagnetic interference um and i suspect that this bell wire probably is twisted as well but when you get to the more exotic cables that you get into shielding and all sorts and that's why you get woven cables because by crossing conductors all the time it improves it rejects uh noise coming into the cable or you can use braid which i tend to use because i think it shields extremely well now often with the analog interconnects that I produce, uh, I do unshielded ones because I actually think that if you can get away with an unshielded cable in certain areas of your system, like interconnects, by twisting the conductors, I tend to find it, it, it makes it sound more open. And when you're using braid, I find it, it's, uh, it sounds more closed in. But again, these are subtle changes. And when you get into anything high end, it becomes subtle changes and and I can see where the snake oil police are coming from but you also need to know what you're listening for so I do all my listening tests in the dark I've said it before and it's the best way to tell the difference between one cable to another now if I said that to the snake oil police they'd just go ah it's rubbish I wouldn't do that that, that you couldn't tell the difference and all that business but you can because you your senses heighten in the dark and because you can't see i make the dark the room as dark as possible and all i can see is some lights on the amplifier shining and then when you sit there and you listen and you need to get into quite a relaxed state as well because a lot of the time when you come home from work and you're you know you've had a hard day and you want to sit there and listen to some music kick back and uh you'd be quite sort of, you've had a hard day, you'd be, you know, you want to sit there and chill. And that is the time when you can tell the difference more than if you're busy. If you're busy, um, see, I never ever bend over the back of the, uh, the, the system changing cabling and then sit back down again because it gets me all roughed up. So what I do is I'll, I'll do an A-B test, but I'll have to, I'll, I'll A-B it first with one cable and then I'll do it again half an hour later once I've listened to it for quite a while and then I've, I've calmed down a bit and sat down and relaxed a lot more and that's the best way that I can tell the difference but um, it's interesting uh, what this professor's come out with um, I've not put anything on this video about it I'm just going to put a link to Anna Dialogue's video because he's explained it all in there quite well and he's a true audiophile as well and I just think some people they, 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 it's difficult to say it without, you know, upsetting people. But, I mean, number one as well, some people do have better hearing than others. I'm not saying that, that I don't know, it's, it's complicated, but uh, you know where I'm coming from. 
I mean, as I said, it's been a hard slog running this channel because I get lots of abuse. And I will be um, doing other videos on. I'm hopefully going to start reviewing equipment as well on this video. But I need to get up to a certain amount of subs before companies will even entertain me. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be interesting in the, in the coming years. I will definitely be. And also another thing I'm going to be doing is building a set of speakers soon. So stay tuned for that. So this is only just a, a quick video. Um, so uh, all I've got to say is thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to uh, press that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And spread the word, Tweaker Man. Let's get this cable building revolution going and convince the, uh, the snake oil police that that you can improve sound quality. Let's do it, lads. Let's go for it. Thanks for watching, guys.